Thanks for tuning in to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. Here you'll find tips, insight, and information to help your music and your ministry succeed. Whether you're a singer, a musician, or a songwriter, we want to help you where you are, but we also want to help you get to where you want to go. We believe that our talents are God's gift to us, but what we do with those are our gift back to God. Yesterday's information is important, but what we can learn today will make this the best day yet. This is Jonathan Wilburn inviting you to the Charles Novell School of Music, July the 14th through the 20th at Murray State University in Murray, Kentucky. You don't want to miss this opportunity to enhance your craft and to sing the praises of Jesus Christ. You will enjoy this. So log on to cnsmusic.com and get more information about how you can get registered today. Welcome back to another episode of the Charles Novell School of Music Podcast, The Best Day Yet. I am Rob Novell, your host for this here podcast. Excited to come to you today. So we have a unique episode today. Um, back in 2020, 2020 was a pivotal year in the Charles Novell School of Music. Man, God did a lot personally in me and a lot through our school in 2020. We... We would COVID year. I don't like to even recognize that name, but that's that's the year we all know. Same storm, different boats. That's how I kind of look back. But it was a year that brought about um, growth because I had to learn that change is inevitable, but growth is optional. So we had to find new ways to do the same old thing. And we ended up having to go online with our school for 2020. We built an online school, which is still currently active. We have over 125 video courses now on our online school. And what we're going to do today is we are actually going to go into an episode, a class that is uh, was produced for CNS 20, and it's still active and currently on our online school of music. And it's with our staff member, Shannon Newman. And he is talking on uh, branding and kind of giving you a branding overview, explaining what branding is, explaining how uh, the corporate world uses branding to push their products. And it's a unique twist on how we can brand our ministries and uh, allow people to know through our packaging what our product is and the narrative behind what we do. It allows... uh, people to know who we are. We have been very intentional with the branding of CNS over the last four years. And branding is going to allow you to stand out, kind of be unique, be different from the rest of the crowd. And Shannon is going to bring that information to you again. You'll hear a couple things I want to clarify. This again is from 2020. Our theme of our school that year was be the influence. And branding can help you Do your packaging, get your product out there and your narrative out there so that you could be the influence in someone's life. So let's go into that class with Shannon Newman. And you all, if you apply this stuff, I promise this will make it your best day yet. Hey, I'm Shannon Newman and welcome to this class on branding. And let me tell you a little bit how we got into this. Um, There's a book that came out earlier this year, and it's a book by a lady named Laura Bull. That's B-U-L-L, Laura Bull. The book is entitled From Individual to Empire, colon, A Guide to Building an Authentic, Powerful Brand. And I heard this lady on a podcast, and I was really impressed. And I bought the book. I just felt like it was something I ought to do. Actually, and anyway, it's a long story, but I bought the book, started reading it, had to drive to Atlanta the next day, and I called Rob in the process. And anyway, I was so excited about this book. And then she starts out talking about being an influence and what it is to be an influencer and building a brand. And part of that, some things that I dealt with in that class that I taught called Know Your Strengths. So you might want to go check that out if you haven't. But Anyway, um, it's a great book and it's on building a brand and what she talks about is the fact that most people want to throw products out there and from a musical standpoint, she was the youngest 
executive for a major record label company or record a major record label in Nashville. She worked for Sony Records in Nashville. She became an executive vice president of Sony Nashville at the age of 27. And she is a branding expert. She worked with a lot of artists, many of who you, who you would know, to help build their brand and shape their careers. And the book's very interesting and it talks about all of that. So with us being a music school, that's kind of something that I thought would appeal to people. The other thing is, is we also have the pastor's conference and maybe you're a church leader, you're on staff at your church. One thing you want to think about is building your brand. Um, let me explain it this way. You may not realize the importance of building a brand, but let's put it this way. I'll bet you that the last time you watched the news on television, your local news, I'll bet you that there was an, uh, an attorney that had an ad on there. Now, those attorneys probably run the same ad. Some of these attorneys spend over $100,000 a month or some of these law firms to create their brand. Now, they create their brand and you're not sitting there watching the news one night at six o'clock thinking, you know what, I'd like to hire him. I think I'll have a car wreck or a personal injury or a injury at work tomorrow. They build the brand so you're aware of what they do. So when you need an attorney or you need someone to represent you or a friend does, that you'll recommend that person. So that's how they build their brand. Some of their commercials are great. Some of them aren't great. Some of them are cute, but the, the way that they work is by building a brand that you rely on. So that's why we're kind of dealing with what we're dealing with. And if you're a church, you need to build a brand or a name that people recognize if it's nothing more than people like oh yeah i know people every time i hear somebody talk about that church they're excited about this or that there's things you can do that builds a brand that influences your community in a lot of different ways that creates the brand of who you are the interesting thing about brand the word itself actually comes from branding like an animal or branding livestock or branding a product, you know, but basically it was a sear. It was a trademark where they would, you know, if you had a cow and it's South Fork Ranch, you'd have like an SF and you'd brand it. It wouldn't be spelled out. It was a logo. It, that, that's, you know, how we brand cows today is basically the same thing. And that's where the word brand came from. That's the etymology. So when we talk about brands, it goes right back to that, back from the 15th century. In fact, it's a symbol. It's a logo. Uh, there's a writer by the name of Bobby Osinski that's a big music business guy and I wanted to see what he had to say about brands and he said a brand is a promise of quality and consistency thought that was a pretty neat definition uh, in becoming an influencer you promote a brand whether it's promoting yourself promoting your church promoting your organization your group you're an influencer and you promote that brand and we talk about brand being the influence now, in this book, it talks about something that all brands are built on, and she calls it the three pillars of a brand. And I think this is great if you want to understand a brand and why they are effective and why they work. There's three things. It's pretty simple. You have the packaging, you have the product, and you have the narrative. Now, in her illustration that she likes to use, she likes to talk about a perfume, you know, a perfume of fragrance. If it's, you know, if it's like Ralph Lauren Polo and you've got the picture of the Polo Rider or whatever, you've got the packaging. If it's the men's cologne, you got the green bottle, you know, and all that stuff with the, the Polo guy on it. And then you've got the fragrance of what it smells like, the chemical substance of what it is. And then you have the story behind it. You know, you see these, the models and the people that, you know, promote, you know, it, it makes it look like if, if you just smell like that, you're going to have the beautiful life and this, you know, ostentatiousness about you. It's going to be perfect. So you buy our cologne and you'll at least smell like you're successful or whatever. That's how they promote that. Um, let's look at another brand, Coca-Cola. You know Coca-Cola just simply by the bottle shape. You know, Coca-Cola even advertises their sh shape of the bottle, that packaging. And then you look at the stories of Coca-Cola. You think about polar bears at Christmas time or Santa Claus. You may think about uh, 
slogans like uh, Coke adds life or Coke is it or Coke is the real thing. Or you may think of those old commercials like I'd like to teach the world to sing. There's a narrative, there's a product, and then there's the packaging. So when we look at all of those things and how it's all put together, you can even look back to other brands that uh, may have faded for some reason. I mean, look at something like Sears and Roebuck. Sears and Roebuck was the biggest thing in the world. I mean, as far as the, they were actually the, considered the largest retailer online in the world through the Sears catalogs, the Sears wish books. At one time, Sears actually owned Allstate Insurance. They owned Dean Witter, um, the stock agency, that, or stock brokerage. They owned Discover Cards. It was part of the Sears Financial Network, the H&R Block. They owned uh, the Car Care Centers. Uh, they even owned Western Auto. They owned, Die, had the, the brand name of Die Hard Tires. They uh, had Craftsman Tools, Kimmore Appliances, um, Tough Skin Jeans. At one point they owned Kmart. They had the exclusive rights to Martha Stewart. Um, you just think of all of those things that Sears had. Now they're no more. And part of that was because all of those things I talked about, all of those brand names like their car care center that's NTB Tire, they decided to spin it off. They own Lands In, you know, the online retailer that did, does clothing, clothing and stuff. They sold it off and then they put it back in their stores after they sold it off. They sold off uh, Craftsman Tools to Black & Decker and now you find it in Lowe's and Ace Hardware. Uh, they've sold off the, the Kenmore Appliance brand. I mean, you look at what they've done, they've lost their core. They've lost who they are, you know, so that's part of, part of the branding experience. And then you look at people like Apple Computer, you think of the old days of the Apple IIe and then they went to the Macintosh and then they almost went bankrupt. They brought Steve Jobs back, they invented the iPod. Then they came out with the iPhone that totally revolutionized everything. Um, Apple has done so many revolutionary and innovative things with the iPhone and if you're using a smartphone you can thank Steve Jobs for that because Steve Jobs saw them develop what became the iPad and he's like let's put that down into a phone so the iPad was actually first they created a phone out of it and at the time they had an exclusive agreement with AT&T or Singular who was not the largest I mean, they were the largest cell provider, but they didn't have the market share. The actual largest cell phone company at that point, as far as smartphones goes, was actually BlackBerry. And the way Apple does things, people said it would never work. But not only does it work, all the other phones are basically using the same, same type of cloud computing system. So you have one brand to thank for that. Uh, think of another brand that went out of the way that, or that's gone now, like Kodak. Uh, Kodak at one time, if you had a picture, it was either taken on Kodak film, printed on Kodak paper, or both. Now the number one camera in the world is the iPhone. So Apple did that. So you look at brands and you look at how they, you know, there may be like multiple brands within a brand entity. And you may look at the brand recognition and who they are and what they do and what, you know, what identifies them by, you know, what do they do that identifies them? How are they known? Um, then you look at influencers and people who've built a brand like a Taylor Swift, for instance, who basically has built a career. She reached out to her fans, was very plugged in with her fans, and she's still plugged into her fans. She actually has evolved, um, some would argue even you know, socially with her fans. Um, I mean, she's not the small little teenage girl singing the country songs. Now she's doing all this other stuff and doing all kinds of other advocacy things. Um, look at people like Kanye West. Now here's the most amazing thing. Do you all remember the time that Kanye West, uh, Taylor Swift got an award for a music video and Kanye Swift was uh, a little inebriated and he went forward and said Beyonce had the best, you know, the, you know, the best video ever and Taylor Swift went off crying and Kanye looked like an idiot and the President of the United States called him a jack whatever, you know, and you would think, well, 
that would hurt Kanye West. But actually, that week, Taylor Swift and Kanye West sold three times more product than they had sold in the previous months because it actually helped both of them because what they did was true to who they were. The fact that Taylor Swift looked like she was the persecuted one and went off crying and the way that Kanye West was, his fans liked what he did, it was true to their core. Then you take that in the world of politics, and I'm not getting political, but you take a person with an authentic brand, maybe like a Donald Trump, he says something that's Trumpish that some people might not like, but the people that support him think, well, that's Donald Trump. Or you take a politician who has built an inauthentic brand, you know, a brand that won't last because they're not who they say they are, then there's a moral failure and then they resign in shame. Or you take somebody that's known for moral failures, regardless of party, they screw up. But they're known for moral failures and they survive it. And I don't want to get into parties or anything, but the authenticity of the brand helps survive in a downturn or when things go wrong because it's authentic. We'll get into a little bit of that later. Um, you know, even just recently, this has kind of been my thing. Did you realize that Burger King sold tacos? I don't know why. It was for a limited time only, but. They sold tacos for 99 cents at Burger King. I don't know what that has to do with burgers, but they sold tacos. Anyway, uh, your talents, your strengths, and your perspective are all the things that make you. So how do we throw those and kind of put that in a branding context? Um, I think there's several things you should look at, and I think you should study things. Like you should look at a book like Laura Bull's book, from individual to empire, you need to kind of study your market or your industry. The reason I say that is because a lot of times as an artist or a singer, what we'll do is we'll think, well, I'm just going to record this CD and I'm going to put it out there and I'm going to try to sell it. But if you had the packaging that related and it reflected who you were and it reflected what you're doing, um, if you're a church, what are you doing? You know, what are you know what differentiates you? What's your story? Um, let's look at somebody that's one of ours. Let's look at Jeff Stice. I mean, Jeff has a story. Jeff's honest. He's authentic. Jeff's a talent. He has all these abilities, but there's a narrative as well as the talent. Now the packaging obviously probably could use some more work, but. That's another story, but he's got Stacy that helps him overcome that. Anyway, getting back to it, your brand is you. It's your talents, it's your strengths, it's your perspective. You know, one of the questions I asked myself was, does God really need another singer? It's kind of like when the one of the last churches I was at was a new church start, and it was funny because the pastor that came was somebody I had worked with, and when they called him, his question was to them, does this area need another church? Because there was already within like the association of two counties, there was already like 120 Baptist churches. What's going to make us any different? Why do we need another church? You know, what is it that we do? So when you start looking at all of that, you need to survey. Uh, my notes actually say study the industry. But you need to survey the area. In other words, who are you trying to reach? Um, what do people want? What do they expect? Um, how do you deliver it? Who is that audience? I mean, who's the people that you're trying to get? How do you cultivate an audience? These are things to think about. Do you have a strategy, you know, in what you're trying to do? What's your product? Is it authentic to your brand? What happens when brands stray? You know, big brands make mistakes. Look at uh, look at Coca-Cola. Do you remember the debacle with New Coke, where Coca-Cola tried to be Pepsi? Um, remember the tacos at Burger King? So, think about all of these things. Does your music actually reflect who you are, or? 
does this ministry reflect what your church is trying to do? Um, like I said, sometimes one of the best things you can do is just try to figure out what do we do well, what can we improve, and what do we need to get rid of? Um, does it reinforce your message? Something going back on something like that. Have you all ever heard of an artist named Chris Gaines? He was a pop singer. Uh, he went by another name called Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks tried to develop a alternate ego named Chris Gaines and release pop music and it didn't really go over anywhere other than the country music fans that kind of thought it was unique. But it didn't go the way he thought it would go because it wasn't authentic to who he was. And when you're real with your audience, it's not a facade. You can be transparent. You don't necessarily need to tell every detail of your past, but when you're authentic to who you are, you don't have to worry about being something you're not. I mean, that's just basic sense. You can be vulnerable. One of, that's one of the buzzwords right now is vulnerability. Um, Brene Brown, if you are into that, you can go to Netflix and check her video out. I've watched those videos that she's done and got a lot from it. Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of Christian principles there. And it's, you know, vulnerability or authenticity, whatever you want to call it, you know, it works and it's real and it's who you are. And that's how we reach people. People do want to get to know you. People want to know. You know, if you're an artist, people want to know who you are. People want to know who their pastor is. People want to have a sense that they know who they are and they want to know the real person. So being authentic goes a long way. Um, so to me, summing it up kind of briefly, the questions you ask yourself, what's your narrative? You know, who are you? What are you trying to communicate? If you could tell a group, this is what I'm called to do. This is what I'm trying to do. Maybe you only have five minutes with the pastor to get the appointment. Then you need to be able to express that. Think about these questions. What are you going to tell that person when you get the opportunity to talk to them and tell them who you are? Tell them your narrative. How do you describe yourself? What's your story? What's your testimony? And then that develops into a bigger thing that becomes part of your program. Then let's go to the packaging. Are you creative? Do you have an eye towards composition to create interesting things, whether it's websites, CD packages, or whatever? If you don't, there's people who do. If you have a weakness in an area or you don't excel in a certain area, you may need some help. You may need to go to a third party. You may need to go to a graphics designer or go to someone who does video production or audio production. You can't necessarily do everything, especially if you don't have a natural ability to it. So you need to find honest people to evaluate what you're doing and ask them, what would you do to, you know, what would you do if you were me? to be in a better position. You make sure uh, that your music and your merchandise all reflects you, your brand, and the message that you're trying to relate to your audience. And when we talk about audience, sometimes that word may sound commercial, but in the context that we use it here, basically, it's reaching the people that God puts you in front of to reach. And that's your audience. So. I don't want to make it, I don't want to sound so secular in that, but I want you to be conscious of that. For further resources, there's a lot of things out there. There's a lot of podcasts out there. Uh, it, contact me, and, I mean, because I think there's so many different ones that, that do different things, but keep stuff like this in front of you constantly. Also, um, the book From Individual to Empire by Laura Bull is a very good book because it helps you identify who you are. It helps put you on a path to where you need to be and get you to think things in broader context. And you may end up looking at that thinking, man, I need to get somebody to help me out. Or you may just 
find everything you need in that book and be able to go forward. But it's definitely something I would recommend. And so when we talk about brands, just always remember the one that knows you best, love you, loves you the most, and he's got his brand on you, and that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because that's what all of this is about. We're his, and any brand that we have should reflect that we're part of his brand. Anyway, thanks for taking the class or watching, and if you've got any questions, just contact me at shannon at woollane.com, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you may have or maybe try to help you in some way find some resource that you need. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under the name The Charles Novell School of Music. And for more information on CNS and our upcoming events, like our online school, our weekend regional sessions, our creative coaching, and our pastor's retreat, you can visit us at our website at www cnsmusic.com As you've listened to this episode, we hope that you've gained some information that you can apply to your music and to your ministry to make today the best day yet.